Hi everyone, welcome to Low Temperature Thermochronology Online Lectures. I'm Ni Tao from School of Earth Science and Resources, Chang'an University. We'll be continuing learning about Chapter 3, and this time we'll be going through Section 3, Alpha Ejection Correction. The alpha ejection correction, also named as recoil correction or FT correction, is achieved by importing the fraction of alpha decays that come to rest within the dated grain using this equation here, where A1 and A2 are feed parameters incorporating the stopping distance and density of stopping median, and beta is the surface to volume ratio. Alpha retentivity is higher for uranium-238 than for thorium-232. To compensate this difference, a weighted mean Ft for uranium and thorium is suggested by defining a weighting factor as the fraction of helium derived from each. A238 referring to the fraction of helium derived from uranium-238. The corrected helium age is married age divided by the main FT factor. The largest grains will have the least uncertainty on FT correction, as crystal width decreases below a certain level, for example 70 microns. FT values become extraordinarily sensitive to grain size. At smaller grain sizes, errors in FT factor will become increasingly large. So, it is advised to pick and analyze larger grains if possible. Here is a couple of explanations for FT factor. First, FT factor depends on the geometry and the size of dated crystal and the regions between 0 and 1. Second, FT factor, as we know, it requires qualification of size and geometry of dated crystals in order to calculate the surface to volume ratio. There are some prerequisites for applying FT correction. First, it requires homogeneous distribution of parent isotope. Second, it is very important to make sure that implantation of helium from surrounding matrix is neglectable. And three, we need to make sure that the dated crystal has to be geometry of a hexagonal prism or a sphere. More importantly, to use FT correction, we also need to make sure that the dated crystal is free of fractures, cracks, and other impurities, as is shown in this figure here. This is the perfect crystal that we want to pick. In fact, the night accumulation of radiogenic helium-4 is, however, governed by several factors, including production, diffusive loose, alpha ejection from its outermost, for example, 20 microns, and alpha injection over a compatible length scale from included mineral, and alpha ejection from two adjacent mineral grains as we can show in this figure here, the Z3 greens. The prerequisite that insignificant helium-4 implantation from matrix rock should be valid for most applications. The implantation of helium is unlikely to be significant, considering the relative high uranium and thorium concentration of analyzed minerals, compared with host rock. Nevertheless, this assumption may not be right in appetites with extremely poor uranium thorium content. As are shown in the figures here, that helium concentration in the margin of the appetite grains shows significant increment after geological period of time. For example, here is after about 100 million years. For appetites with low uranium concentrations, below 5 ppm, as much as 50% overestimation of appetite helium ages may be generated when surrounding a uranium or thorium-rich sedimentary matrix. The other is homogeneous uranium and thorium distribution in crystals being dated. 
which may be indirectly reviewed by analysis data and generally unknown before dating. Such hypothesis is difficult to realize in natural minerals because of zoning of uranium and thorium and or the presence of mineral inclusion rich in parent nuclei. If a zoned mineral has uranium and thorium rich fractions located along its rim, a younger age will be measured due to alpha ejection. If a zoned mineral has uranium or thorium rich fractions located in the core of the crystal, age is older than the real age. For uranium or thorium rich mineral inclusions, the effects of parentless helium 4 alpha ejection should be taken into account as well. Another factor we need to consider is radiation damage. As is shown in these slides here, radiation damage is produced through self-irradiation. It is known to promote helium loss, and unfortunately, it will produce two young helium ages. The above is all for section 3. Thank you.